Welcome back to CGH, Cook Goes Hunting's podcast. I guess it's going to be episode three. This is my brother Luke. Luke. What's up? Um, say hello to the people, I guess. Hello, uh, people. So what I was saying, I was like, it is super awesome to smoke pot and then go work out. Like, when I go on runs, which I hate cardio. I fucking hate cardio. Pretty sure most people hate yeah, cardio. Yeah, I hate cardio. And, and the people who who, hate, who love cardio are crazy. Are the people are the people that we hate that keep talking about running. Like, how do you how can you tell somebody runs? Don't let don't worry, they'll let you know, right? Yeah. And I hate cardio. I hate it. But when I smoke pot and then I go run, what I was trying to say was like I'll be running and I'll get so into my head. Like one of the things, one of the things I think about a lot of times on the runs is, uh, uh, if I had a Twitter account, what funny kind of things I would say on there. Like <laughs> that's the shit I have in my head while I'm jogging and I'm trying not to pay attention to dying. You know what I mean? I'm just running along and I'm trying to think of stuff like that. And uh, when I'm doing that, I'll get so focused in my head that I'll forget that I ran. Like, I'll forget, like, 50 meters worth of running. You know what I mean? It'll be like, and, and then all of a sudden, I'll, I'll, it'll, like, I'll unfocus on that thought, and it'll... You realize uh, that you've hit, you ran all that distance. No, and, and, I'll, and I'll start realizing that I'm running. So, like, it, I could feel it all change into, oh, God, this sucks. Oh, God, I'm dying. This hurts hurt so bad. And then you try to get back into your head. But you can literally skip time when you're doing cardio. We you, you smoke pot before you go... Um, Take off, take off. That's one of my favorite things. Only thing is, I've I've ever thought about making a Twitter account. I think pretty sure the only person I would follow is the Wendy's account. I have just, seen the Wendy's account. They are stuff. always I just yeah talking shit. Yeah, they're savages. Always talking. They're shit. They're savages. It's it is it is exactly what everybody's been waiting for for so long. Like we've always been like all this wholesome advertisement and all the family and then now since we're PC like we got to make sure we have the interracial family and like all kinds of stupid stuff like that that like everybody's like why are you doing that why don't you just be like lifelike like for real like what like the last one I saw was them digging at McDonald's uh, it's like a, it's something about you know how do you learn how to make a, a right burger and they say like not from a clown but it's a oh. Star Wars reference from, you know, talking to Palpatine, you know, how do y'all learn these powers not from a Jedi? Oh. Oh, which, which, which one is that? Which, which, is it Star Wars, right? Yeah. Yeah, which Star episode Wars? Three. Episode 3. Well, when I was sitting there thinking about it, I was like, we've been waiting for, for them to go off the handle and stop playing the whole, they always play dog and pony show. It's always PR stuff. And you have to be super on the line of, of the, you know what? Be a savage ever so often. That shit's funny. That shit's funny. At least the people who's going to Wendy's and pounding down a bunch of burgers from Wendy's. But the one person I'm pretty that, sure they have a sense of humor. Like the one person that was trying to get the most retweets like ever on Twitter, like I think it was like over seven million retweets or something like that. And you know, they said, you know, yo, Wendy's, can I get like free nuggets for like life or a year? If I get 7 million retweets. I think I've seen that one. What did they say, though? What, do you remember what the whole thing? I don't remember the whole thing, but I know that he got pretty sure more than what anybody else had gotten, but he didn't break it. But Wendy still gave him, like, nuggets for a year. Oh, because really? he still got so damn many. Oh, they did? And they just, oh, okay. That's pretty nice. Like, I've seen, like, people ask that stuff, especially, especially like, Reddit and stuff like that, you know. That if They always have the, the fake texts, where it's, like, a text worth of how many... How many likes on me in real life does it t- that I can get so that will you go out on a date with me? Usually it's like a Tinder type mm-hmm. of, of fake text, and uh, they're like, "Oh, a thousand or whatever," and uh, then they post that bullshit and they get a whole bunch of what is it called? Car- it's Karma on Reddit, right? Yeah, and then I know the last kind of savage thing I saw on uh, um, Twitter was uh, since Microsoft and Nintendo are starting to do crossplay on stuff. Yeah, but Sony isn't. Yeah, and Sony's were, being dicks about and that. And they were roasting, and they had something that kind of roasted Sony on that point. I, yeah, I can't remember what it was. I just it's, I, it's something about building in Minecraft, I think. Oh yeah, there is some type of yeah. They're doing I barely remember it. I barely remember. Yeah, I was just I cruise Reddit every so often uh, when I'm you know not doing anything, 
Um, that's where I catch most of, like, that's where I'm up to date on, like, news and stuff like that. Or, man, half the time you don't even read the articles, you just see what the comments say. Most of the time they have a TLDR, uh, you know, too long didn't read on there, which I'm fine with those. And that's where I normally get news. But what was I saying? Um, yeah, the, uh, them being a savage is one of the funniest things that's going on right now. I wish they would keep doing that. And most people, and like it's, you don't see it a whole lot, but you see like constantly, Wendy's is on there for some, you know, just kind of roasting somebody. Yeah, roasting somebody. Now, at first I thought that there was just, uh, when I first saw him, I thought it was just a fake tweet. You know what I mean? Just somebody just made a fake tweet or not even just a fake fake nope, Twitter clown. It's just, but but yeah, then then they get into verified stuff and then it starts happening more often and people are like, Wow, this is awesome. I'm glad they did that. Whoever's their PR person needs to get uh like, like whoever runs that account get, runs their account needs give to give that guy a raise. Yeah, give that guy a raise for sure. Like he needs to be making some because he's definitely like he's that's got the all time. that positive yeah. interest coming. That's in. all the time. Even if people don't even if people are like, nah, I'm not gonna go be a fat shit and eat at a bunch of Wendy's, shit's still hilarious. It's still gonna tell somebody. Like we're talking about Wendy's right now. I wanna eat Wendy's. I can't remember the last time I ate Wendy's. Ate them on the way here. Ate them on the way here, that's right. You did you drove uh, they, they don't know, but you just got here today, this morning at about ten or Ten-ish. so. Yeah. And then uh, promptly Racked the fuck out <laughs> for about what an hour and a half, two hours. It was a good while. It was a good while. It was like probably like seventeen hours. That I, dro- seven- that I drove was probably around. No, you were sleeping for about seventeen hours. It was like seven. It felt like seventeen hours. Yeah, because I'm. No, I'm just kidding. It, they, it, uh, it was only like a two-hour nap, I think. I know you started snoring, and uh, Rook actually got up and was like staring at you, and I had to tell her to, "Hey, leave him alone, quick." Like she, she was like, "What's wrong with that guy? Why is he? Why is he making noises?" She's fucking out like a light. <laughs> and uh, but yeah, you drove all the way um, from Iowa. From Iowa, and it took you how long? How many hours? Uh, the trip itself would, should have been around sixteen. I think it took me eighteen so, because I would stop, get gas. Well, yeah. Stretch my legs along the way. And... You should. I think one of the longest drives I ever did from that route was. Uh, I came home on leave to get my Jeep fixed when I was at Fort Polk. So I was in Louisiana and drove to West Virginia and back uh, in my Jeep. I did, I towed my Jeep the one time. I drove a buddy's avalanche. My Jeep was getting, because my Jeep has big 35 inch tires on it, so they were getting the death wobble in the front. Everything was getting loose, and like if I hit like a bump or a pothole, it would start a wobble. And by the time it it radiated out from the rim to the outside mm-hmm. of the tire, the tire's going like this, and my Jeep's like, whoa, 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 whoa. like I'm in there like, like yeah, that. I'm yeah. not dealing with this. Yeah, and you'd have to yank the steering to the left and the right to smooth itself out, and it was just I didn't, I didn't it was above my pay grade to learn how to. I didn't know how to fix this. I didn't know how to fix that. Um, so I took it to the only mechanic. They wanted to gouge me down there for prices. They, like they were talking to get that fixed. They were talking like sixteen hundred bucks and stuff. And I was like, no. I, like, I, I grew up knowing like in a mechanic shop, you know. I, and I worked on off-road vehicles most of my life before I could drive. And like I was a professional off-roading kid before I had a license to drive an actual car on a road. <laughs> <laughs> but they want to charge me, so I trailered it. I uh, had a buddy of mine, AV, Emma Visca, but uh, he had a super long uh, you last name. through West Virginia? I towed it from Louisiana to West Virginia and then West Virginia to Louisiana. Well, I can tell you, I don't know, how, how, how'd you enjoy going down all those hills and turns and everything like that? Oh, I dude. I drove them today. He had, a, he had a, it was a Chevy Avalanche 2500 Stormtroopered out. Stormtroopered out. Everything was white, white on white, except the inside was black, and it was all bells and whistles, right? And Amavisca, uh, he was he was our medic. Uh, he's a short little uh, Mexican dude, uh, uh, but his name was Amavisca, and we called him AB because he had a super long ass last name. And uh, he was our medic, and me and him were drinking buddies. Like we drank our ass off in Louisiana. We were trying to run that. We were trying to drain the swamp down Louisiana if the swamp was liquor, right? So we were paying for drinks and, and 
I was paying for drinks, and he wrapped up. He owed me like 400 bucks. He owed me 400 bucks, and AV's good for it. Um, so I was getting ready to go on leave. I put in two weeks of leave, and I got that, and it was like two days out, two or three days out before I was getting ready to leave. Um, and I said, AV. I was like, hey, man, you know how you owe me that money? He's like, yeah, what's up? I was like, I'm getting ready to go on leave. I need to tow my Jeep to West Virginia and back. Can I use uh, your avalanche? And we'll call the 400 even. And he just goes like this in his pocket, throws me the keys. He's like, all right, man, I'll see you when you get back. That's a, that's a bro right That's exactly there. what he did. That's all he did. He was still in uniform. He's like, yeah, man, here you go. Like, he didn't even, no prior planning of anything. I thought he would be like, yeah, man, I got to do this or this tomorrow. And then uh, you, hit, you leave out what time? Okay, sweet. I'll, I'll have it there for you. Blah, 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 blah. Nah, man, he was just like, whatever. Let me know. Uh, and I was like, do you want your room key? And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me get the room key. Mm -hmm. So so he get that. He get that. I, look, I went to U-Haul, got a trailer, loaded my uh Loaded the Jeep up on there, and I fucking took off, and I uh, was driving. I did, it was 19 hours, 19 hours, and I did it straight, and uh, I shouldn't like have. I, did. I shouldn't have. Well, like, I, I take any kind of break. So I stopped at, like, uh, I stopped when I had to piss, um, but other than that, like, I was, when I had the GPS, I was just paying attention to it, and I was like, oh, man. 300 mile stretch until I gotta do something new. Let's see if I can knock this off before I get tired, right? And I would just be paying attention to the, I would just be paying attention to that. That's what kept me motivated. But I can remember, I can remember I got, I can't remember what road I was on. I think I was close to, I think I was close to Virginia. But I got on this road that had, it was one lane. And it was super late at night. It was like 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning. Single lane, single lane. It had gone to, from four lane to single lane. So there wasn't much traffic, but there was a little bit. Hesco barriers, not Hesco barriers. That's the we're, not, we're not downrange. Concrete barriers. Yeah, concrete barriers down through the middle of it, right? And barely any road. I mean, I was tight, right? And my fucking fuel light came on. My fuel light came on, I was like, Damn it! Uh, they were like food or food and uh, uh, fuel, uh, twenty miles up this way on the right. And I was like, okay, sweet, awesome. At twenty miles, it's usually like you'll you get like when fifty. The, when the light 30. comes on, you've generally got about two gallons left, so you got to figure about whatever the heck yeah, whatever we're running. Is. So yeah, so twenty, forty miles, something like that, right? And I was like, okay, sweet. So I'm driving. I'm not really too worried about it. Here comes that exit. I'm like, awesome blocked off not allowed to exit off and it wasn't anything that i could pull off and just put, scoot around because believe me i would have i'd have just drove right through that it was real tore up off ramp real bad it's like damn it <sighs> kept on driving right so i'm sitting there thinking and i was like okay okay what do i do if i do if I this comes you? off i was like the shoulders all tore up i was like i've got a trailer um what am I going to have to do? I was like, well, I guess what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to pull off, siphon, unload my Jeep. Siphon gas from it? Dry, I'm just going to know. I'm not dealing. I'm not getting fuel oh. in my mouth. Fuck that. Blah. If I can avoid that, I'm going to get in my Jeep, and I'm going to drive to a gas station, go get gas or whatever. The bad thing was how fucking far am I going to have to come down the other side before I can get an off-ramp to come around and get back on the road to the side that I need to get on. I was sitting there thinking, I was like, man, maybe, maybe if there's not, like, a lot of cars, I can just push over one of those concrete barriers and I'll just four-wheel over it with my Jeep, you know, or something like that. I was, that's what I was thinking. I was like, maybe I can, four, maybe I can take the Jeep and I'll four-wheel around that off-ramp, on-ramp type of thing and come up to it. I was thinking of all kinds. Of, I mean, it's 3 o'clock in the morning and on a non-busy road. Out. I wasn't too really worried about it. I saw it most doing this. I, I imagine 10, 15 cars. But uh, I caught another sign that said there was another gas station up there. I can't remember how far it was. But I can remember going up and I was like, man, this is it. Like, I've got to. I hope they don't have Either this. I'm going to get it. Get yeah, there or I'm or, not. Yeah, or, I, or I'm fucked, right? I'm going to have to deal with a whole bunch of shit. So got up there. No shit. Got up on the on-ramp, 
I didn't even stop at the light. I kept on coasting. I was coasting in neutral, started going downhill, and I started turning uh, left into the thing in the neutral, and it started fucking... <laughs> <laughs> like it started su- sucking fumes, and I pulled, I coasted right into the pump. I was like, "Oh my god!" Turn it off, turn it off real quick. And I can't believe that worked out. I was so happy. I was so happy. Filled it all the way back up, and uh, I think I, I wouldn't let it get below a quarter of a tank anymore before I filled it back up. I just got. I wasn't trying to go below a quarter of a tank, and we just got in that. I got in that construction zone, and it was. Like, I was like, everything was going against me. It was, it was going against me. Kind of like how it was a little bit for me last night is when I was coming through Ohio, and it's like 3.30, getting to be 4 o'clock in the morning. And I know there's, the only things that's really open is the truck stops. Right. Kind of, kind Rest of stops. areas and stuff like that, yeah. And I'm getting cr- kind of close to a quarter tank, and I'm kind of going through the back roads a little bit here, and it's like, you know, I'm not seeing a whole lot of things open because I'm not going to go flying off the beaten path to go find a gas station. It's like yeah. five miles out of the road. I'm kind of yeah. going for stuff that's only on the sides. And I'm like, I pull into this gas station, all the lights are off, and like the lights are on inside. But apparently they weren't open, so I was like... You know how weird that is nowadays to run into a gas station that's not open 24 hours, you know what I mean? Like, cause like the, that's that's few and far between. Like, I mean, you think I the pump would still work if you yeah, put a car in? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was like, if you just... I'd run into gas stations, like, needing gas, and I'm like, I'm not too worried about it. I got my car. Swipe my card. It'll it'll work. I don't need all that stuff. But they'll be like, pump closed. I'm like, you have a credit swiper machine. Like, why is the pump closed? That is so I mean, stupid now. I gotta see, you know, turning into no kind of other trans- but this is one you've already like i understand for. if you're in like super rural areas middle of bumfuck nowhere like i get that but if you're coming if you're a gas station that's anywhere off of a main an, M- an msr mm-hmm. like bro like yeah, of all like of all the little as i pulled bit. out of this place i was like okay i'll take my business elsewhere lo and behold there's two miles down the road another one that like Apparently everybody knew about because when I pulled in, there was like eight cars there. It's like, yeah. well, this must be the hangout at four o'clock in the morning. Ah, uh, okay. It must have been. Yeah, it must have been like one of those. Ah, oh, we hang out at the gas station after the bar is closed. <laughs> you know what I mean, type of thing. Well, I was. I, just, I pulled in and it's like, wow. It's just like, I guess I'll fill up here rather than right up the road. And you know, I'll take my business here. Right, right, right. How much? How many miles per gallon do you get on that car? Do you get good? How many times you fill up? Uh, I think I counted was four times I filled up. I probably could have gotten by with three and gotten here, but I wanted to fill up just to be just to be sure. But like you get, also weren't you also weren't being you weren't driving like an asshole, right? You're probably doing no, what three not, over. Not with that thing. That thing is just eye candy for. Cars. Well, yeah, it's a bright red two door sports car, so yeah, um, yeah, that's. Absolutely I get about thirty when it when I'm cruising down the interstate. I get about thirty four. Probably oh, not on those hills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 34 is not bad at all. I get and just trucks down there. I just crank up the tunes, just put it in cruise control, and away I go. Yeah, cruise control is the way to go. Cruise control is the way to go. Like I usually, there's times I, I remember driving through Oklahoma when the speed limit was 80. I think that's super awesome. I'm so glad that the, the speed limit. 80 somewhere um, and it, it's like that in Kansas not really like in Kansas the speed limit's like 55 but you're no shit in the middle of cornfields that you don't see houses anywhere. If anywhere and there's straight line roads that maybe do this you know bro you could do 90 you know what I mean if you want to I thought it was kind of interesting. I was already going about 73 down, I think, through... It's either through Indiana, Indiana or uh, Illinois. I had a semi just <laughs> past me. I was like, wow. Yeah, well, I, well oh, what I was saying was Oklahoma, 80 miles per hour. I can remember coming... I was doing a job out that way. It's when I was doing glass work. And uh, we got in Oklahoma, and it was my turn to drive. And I was like... I looked at the speed limit and it said 80 and I was like, I asked the two guys in the car that was with me, I was like, did that say 80 miles per hour? Like I'm allowed to do 80? Because you're used to 65, and, 70. Yeah, and they're like, go. yeah, man, yeah, man, Oklahoma's the shit. <laughs> I hope they, uh, hope they legalize pot here soon. There's a huge debate about that in, uh, Oklahoma. 
They said, I can't remember. I can't remember if it was some politician said it, or I, I know I read it somewhere, probably on Reddit. Um, where he's like, we have two choices, Oklahoma. Legalize, like. Legalize something that has a, a ton of medical and medicinal uses that can help uh, uh, people with seizures or people in late stern cancer, you know, blah, 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 blah. Or, or, just stay in the dark or we just stay like we do and we'll be the last to do everything ever because that's how Oklahoma rolls or something to the, to the stand. I guess they, they're just staunch, uh, not broke, don't fix it, we're going to stick in our ways, blah, 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 blah. I think eventually it'll come around to every state, but each each state's gonna have their own little. Why do you Why do you legitimately think that pot is becoming legal? Like, why do you think? I I, I wonder. If like I, your own personal opinion, you know what I mean? It doesn't have to be based in facts; it's just your own personal opinion. I think it's because it in the large scope of things, it's not as bad as like heroin, meth cocaine. Right. It doesn't cause like the same problems those do. Right. So you're saying it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, give it to them. It's not that harmful. It's, it's not that bad. Just let them have something. Do you it, think that's a, it's, it's a quelching the demand? Yeah. It's not like, you know, it's not like the opiate problem and stuff like that. I yeah. mean, you're prosecuting people for like an ounce of pot when you could be out trying to get actual hard stuff off the streets. Right, absolutely. It feels like it's a waste of time to arrest that person. And, and then it's, it's and a waste of resources to prosecute them through the courts. Right. When there's better stuff to be going for. Right, and I think it would also, I think it would also um, help with the whole traffic jam that's going on with the court system and paperwork. You know what I mean? The, the constant, okay, we're, we're not going to have a court date for three months. And you're like... Like, you get caught up with pot, so you gotta, you gotta sit in jail for three months, and then you get like, oh, well, I was only gonna give you for two months for this, you know, or time served, you know what I well, mean? Well, what about the, the states that have that three, the three strike law? Yeah. And they get nailed with like, you know, whatever amount of pot, it's like, well, bye-bye, ten years prison. Right, right. Yeah, but you're going, going for something. It, it, just, it boggles the mind, it's like, oh, why are you, how, what are you in here for ten years? Right. For? Oh, I had an ounce of pot, and I had third strike. And I know, and I know, I mean, both of us, we were both MPs. And I didn't know, yeah, they don't know. You were in the Army as well. Uh, you were also a military police. You did how many years? Three. Three years, and you were in what years? Uh, 2011, or 2011 till 2014. 2011 to 2014, yeah. And you spent the whole time, well, besides basic training, you spent the whole time in Germany. Yep. Yeah. And you didn't get, you didn't get, you, you didn't get, Employed? Did you go on training? The only movie obviously probably did training. We missions, did. Like, we did lots of like FTXs, training stuff. We got spooled up to get deployed, but then that got canceled. Yeah. Where were they talking about going? I know Afghanistan for sure. They were I don't talking about Afghanistan. Where at though? Well, you, half the time they don't even tell you where at because usually if you get orders for Afghanistan, man, they're just like you're heading to there, and then it kind of changes in route and stuff like that. Like I, and then they re. Print out orders and hand it to you while you're at your, where you're at. You know what I mean? It's just that's how they do stuff. Oh, I was like, I don't. I was like, that one, that car is going slow. <laughs> They're profiling you. Nah, I know. It's the beard. Maybe. How'd you like Germany, though? I enjoyed it. Love Germany. The difference between pre people that like Germany and the people that will talk shit about Germany. People that talk shit did nothing but sit in the barracks and drink. You got my barracks rats, you know? Just, just If you actually went out and, you know, explored the country yeah. and saw stuff, you loved Germany. Yeah. The people that said, you know, Germany sucks, it's boring, sat on post, or only did or only just went to the bars in town. Right, right. That's about it. Like right outside the right outside the, like the they'd go, and stuff like we, that. We were near a town called uh, Kaiserslautern. Kaiserslautern, yeah. And they would just go there and back and but those are the people that like Germany fucking sucks. Yeah. Like I got I got to go to Germany and hang out in Germany for, I got to be there for one Oktoberfest for three days uh, with a buddy, um, and then some missions took me up that way to do stuff, but we weren't there, you know, no more than a couple hours. It's not like we could, we had a, 
a place to drop all our stuff and like go explore and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Like we'd been there and we'd go to like restaurants and like stuff yeah, but like you that there and then, like bars, for, but for, for your specific purpose. Yeah, but yeah, a lot of times was like so picking up the, the picking chance. up our guys and stuff like that. You didn't yeah. get a chance to like, oh, we're gonna spend a week here. Let's go out and fucking yeah. explore. Yeah, and I never did that, and I never. Um, when I took leave while I was over in Belgium, I went to Switzerland. So, like, I didn't, I didn't go. I wanted to go to Germany. And the other thing is too, with the with the job that I had doing personal security, like, they were mad. Like, we were based out of Mons, Belgium, and um, for Shape, the, the the name of the um, name of the base is Shape, which is Supreme Headquarters Allied Powers Europe, <laughs> and doing. PSD over there like you couldn't they would get kind of weary if you went to um, um, oh shit there was there was Brussels, Belgium and Antwerp and Antwerp was like a two hour drive and they'd get kind of squirrely yeah they kind of get like what are you doing all the way in Antwerp you know what I mean So and that's only two hours away and like the armies, the army is you have to stay within a, I think a. It's a two, a two hundred mile perimeter of your base. Two hundred mile or a two hour like drive, in case you get recalled. Yeah, all the time. Like yeah, and like like a lot of people are, don't even pay attention to that, and they just do that shit. But when you're in a, uh, you get called up. And yeah, when you when you're in a high priority job, like a high like like, uh, I, what's the word? A high. Not high stress, not high priority. High security? It's not even that. Like High demand? Not even high demand. Uh, man, I can't believe I'm forgetting words. Sorry. Uh, we were in a very important job. Yeah. We were in a very important, important job. So uh, they kind of took that more seriously. And when we were up in, like, I, I loved going to Antwerp. Antwerp was, one, it wasn't all the trash that was, like, in uh, 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 Brussels. But don't get me wrong, Brussels was nice, but Antwerp was, like, really old, really old area. It's where all the diamonds are held, uh, and they had a mix of super old architecture and stuff like that with, like, um, high-dollar, high-class buildings, like the... Uh, Oh, the suit factory that was up there was like I think that was one where it was like super cool because like the whole building was like open glass like you could see dudes in uh, in suits sewing your stuff like you could watch them if you want like it's just all these super prim and proper dudes in suits and they're just they're sewing all of your all of your uh, tailor made uh, mm-hmm. stuff that you put in your suit. oh it was, I loved it I loved it Antwerp was amazing. Oh, that watching her while I shower. That's fun. Hi, little girl. How are you, Mr. Papas? I know one of the big things that we got into over there was uh, paintball. Yeah, paintball. Because, you know, we're over there, we're making the cola and all that extra money on top of what we're already being paid. Uh-huh. Got nothing else to spend money on. Did you... Might as well buy paintball guns. Did you play against local nationals? No. Like, uh, how... It, what, what it was Germans? is, no, um, so there was the, the base, the, the I know, little, I know Airsoft's big in Germany, too. Yeah, they had that there, too, but, so, I don't know if you knew how that was kind of set up there, there was different concern, concerns, mm-hmm. so, like, where I was, our actual barracks and company was, it was Simbach Concern, yeah. had, uh, Kaiser, Kaiserslautern, and it was the main concern, uh, yeah, like I was, that was I where was, the that's where the twenty first TSC was commanded. That's where like the general stuff oh, was okay. for the area. Yeah, that's the same way it was in Belgium. Like we were attached to shape. Our job was actually at the Sackier's uh, uh, personal quarters, uh, his chateau, and but we lived like my room was on Don Marie concern. It, it, it's, and so like it was. where we would actually go do like MP work because. We were paired up with the Air Force. Mm-hmm. And, and joint the, patrols. Yeah, and so that place was the Volga way, but it was basically split right down the middle. One side was Army, one side was Air Force. 
But on the Air Force That's side... That's why you know it's Fort Rich. One side is Fort Rich, then the other one's Elmendorf. But they're still connected. But on the, on the Air Force side, there's a gate, like, on the back side of the post. Oh, excuse me. I'll go all the way back, and there'll be a rod and gun club. Yeah. So, if you had your family there, and they wanted to go off and shoot guns, you know, you can go rent a gun, buy bullets, do it. But down here, they had, like, like trap shooting. Like, they had shooting. a range, like a, per, like a civilian First, range. They, they had post. trap shooting down here, and then further down, they had, like, speedball courses, and like an uh, urban assault course for paintball. Mm-hmm. And when we all kind of figured that out, we all, you know, you have the largest PX there on Ramstein. Uh-huh. Go in there, and we... Yeah, you know, that's, that's, they always called, uh, Ramstein's, uh, uh, they always call it the land of the big PX. And uh, so, you know, you've got all this money to burn because you're not, you're not paying for housing. You're really not paying for foods. Might as well buy like a four hundred, five hundred dollar paintball gun and go off and have fun with all your buddies. So, what did you get? What did uh, you buy? Which what kind did you buy? Empire Mini. An Empire Mini uh, looks like we had the AK forty sevens of paintball guns are Titman ninety eights. No, this is this is. Uh, no, I'm you saying remember, the you AK, how kind of like the, AK-47 version of paintball guns. Like you can do anything with. They will never fail. They never fuck up. They always work. You can drop it, smash it on stuff. Titman Model 98s. Those son of a bitches were the AKs of the paintball world. Like you kind of remember but I how I had how, a spider. You I had a remember spider. How the angels looked. Yeah, angels were the this shit. This is kind of what my, that's kind of what my was empire. Something was. that was something that was like a Bob Cocker's angel. There was something that had yeah, to do. Yeah, it was a Bob Cocker. Yeah, was it was a Bob Cocker, like as a dude who does paintball, and and they were like expensive, expensive as, as shit, man. They, you're talking like I saw those things. Or is it, no, used. Auto Cocker. Auto, auto Cockers. Cocker. That, no, that was below the Bob. There was a Bob Corker angel or a Bob Cocker. Angel. I know there was. Cocker. I know there's an auto cocker, but I, there is a. I swear there's a Bob something because he did a Bob something auto cocker. He did a Bob something angel. He did a, a Bob something spider. Like he had his own version of of, of a lot of already high dollar. And like we ones. didn't use like the CO two tanks, like the ones you could buy for like twenty thirty bucks a piece. Yeah, we we used the ones that you just fill with compressed air, like you just. Look up to like something you fill your tires with. Yeah, yeah, They're yeah. They're like 150 bucks a piece. Mm-hmm. But you know, you never have to worry about you know rings blowing out because right. they're getting too cold. See, we always went to this place called Sparks, uh, and it was a Sparks gun shop. At first, they f- refilled CO2, and uh, you, they come well, and they do they, it. Well, that, then Matt and them, the people who I built off-road vehicles, were, were they started getting their own CO2 tank. So we started doing that and then paying money, and then. We were friends with, uh, damn it, I can't remember his name. Got his face in my head. But he, uh, Gary, Gary Allen. Gary Allen had this, uh, uh, he owned the fire extinguisher uh, a business. Like, he refilled, he got him checked, he did everything. All the, Every fire extinguisher for every business around that thing, he did it, right? He had CO2 tanks, and then he just never charged us. Mm-hmm. Never charged. So we went, and, uh, well, well since we all had our own stuff, you know, only thing we'd ever pay for is like the, just the pass to go down there and do is like seven bucks to come, you know, play all day. They had, you know, a compressor up there, so you, you know, you go down there, you play a couple games, walk up there, refill your thing, walk back down, and it's just like an all day, you know, kind of thing. Right. Where, like, like four, five, maybe six of us would go down there and do. Yeah. And so like one day, like, uh, there's a lot of people down there, like. People brought their kid down there to try out paintball for a So we're doing three on three speedball. Well, unfortunately, the kid's like right across from me. And there's, it's not like the speedball where all the stuff's blown up, you know? This is like wooden stuff that's all, you know, cobbled together, tires, yeah. stuff like that. And so. It's built, it's built bunkers. Kinda. Yeah. And so this kid immediately bunkers down at the first little thing he gets, and he's just poking over to shooting. And I was like, I can't light this kid up. I, it's just not. I just won't. Don't don't want to do it, because. Well, shit, man. He's got a gun. So I he'll start, light you up. He'll light you he up in a heartbeat. He's just sitting there, kind of casually sitting. So I, I'm sitting there man. hitting the barrier in front of him, just to see if I can't get him to drop so I can move. I think what you should have done is put a paintball bayonet on the end of your paintball gun. So I guess it would just be a brush. 
So you just oh, have a brush. Just, I figure you're just going off just painting a knife. No, no, no. <laughs> just put a brush on the end of your thing, and dip just, it in a bucket of paint, and then just bonsai. run up in there and, and be just, like, Am I supposed to be on bonsai the whole time? I mean, yeah, yeah, if you want to. But you anyway, to. so I start walking. Uh, like he won't, he won't look down or anything. He won't move. And so I just kind of start casually walking them up. And I eventually just put one right into the center of his mask. Just lobbed him? Those are the easy shots. Well, the I used to love though, getting hit in a mask because you never so felt that, it. So that got him out. And But he's after the thing ended, I look over there, and he's you know just so happy and proud that he's got a big old splotch of paint right there. His mom and dad are taking pictures of yeah. him. That was, the, that, was, that was the easy hit. That's where it doesn't hurt. Like, you get hit in the face. It's a little scary because it's like, holy shit, is that a paintball? What? Yeah, because you know I mean? another one of the courses they had there was basically like uh, you assault a fort. Yeah. And I'm looking this way while somebody snuck around, and there's like a gap in the bottom of the fort where you can see people's legs and stuff. And uh-huh. I'm looking this off side, it's just like, I was like, son of a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> so did you, um, so you were never, you never did much drinking. So, I mean, did you try any of the German beer while you were there? Can't say that I did. No. Not, Drinking real isn't my thing. Yeah, I just, oh man, you should have tried some of the German beer at least. They're so. I've delicious. always every everybody that did drink it said they loved it. Yeah, it's super delicious. I love that. Did you go outside of Germany anywhere? Did you go to any other countries while you were over there? No, the furthest I went out is I went and saw the castle and the concentration camp up in Dachau. Up in Dachau, you went went to Dachau. Uh, That's kind of a sight to behold. Yeah, yeah. I didn't get to see that. Um, I didn't get to see any of that. I didn't get to do much. Like I said, like the traveling thing, like you had to put in leave to travel with the job that I had. And we just, we never did. Like we did our, we went up to Antwerp ever so often. And when we weren't supposed to, but we just did it anyways. It was trying on the line of not supposed to. You know? mm-hmm. If you would have gotten recalled, you would have had to have been hauling ass to get back. Yeah. Well, it's two hours, but it's also two hours on an Audubon. Like, like you, like, and I was, shit, I was renting Beamers and Audis at the time and, and, and stuff like that. And didn't have my Jeep for, like, the last year I was there. And, stay, come here. Leave it, leave it. Come here. Come here, come here. Although, driving on the Audubon, that's, like, from where we went, from where we, because, you know, we take Humvees to the, Come here. Come here. Let's go. Come here. You hear me? We take our Humvees over to Vogelway for, you know, change shifts and everything. Uh Uh-huh. And, well, they started doing, like, pretty big bridge construction there. So, like, the lane would go down to really fucking narrow. Mm -hmm. And we're taking up-armored Humvees across these bridges in two-lane traffic. With, like, this much room between the car next to you and the wall. Right, right. I mean, that's... I had to deal with that in Afghanistan, like, spitting these up armor Humvees through, through very tight, like, there's many a times where it's just like, all right, we'll pull the mirrors in, we had to pull those, just the mirrors stick out pretty far anyway, we just needed an extra foot and a half or so to get through them, I can, I can, I can remember grinding my uh, bumper on mud huts and stuff, trying to squeeze through where I'm grinding on both sides, like, you know, you know how in the Autobahn normally with the car is hauling ass down the left side, like the flasher light. Yeah, the flashlight, dude. Well, not here, not America. That should get you a brick thrown at your car, dude. <laughs> so we're heading down to do. So um, pretty sure we're going to the M4 range, you know, or pistol range, it's the same range, to do qual. And so we're all our way there. And you know how when you're going down there, one will pull out, another one will kind of just keep humping, uh, bypassing the car that you're all going around. Yeah. And so I can see this tack, the Beamer taxi just flying up down the road. I was like, well, I'm not going to pull out yet. Well, there's an up-armored that's already out trying to pass, and the car next to him is being a dick. Yeah. And so this taxi thought that this Humvee was just going to magically, you know, drift back over for him. Let's just say it didn't. And he, he, i never seen a Beamer slam on their brakes quite so hard in the yeah. Audubon. Because I don't think the Humvee would have felt it that much. Yeah. <laughs> that's why, I mean, there was a lot of... I can remember one of the most fun... Uh, one of the most fun trips I had in the Army was not... We went up to... From Fort Richardson up to Fort Greeley, Alaska. It's way up north. Uh, 
Fork Ridley, Alaska isn't a base anymore. There's like some, kind there's of like full birds. There's like full birds up there now, and there's not many military personnel up there, anyways. But there's, uh, it's mostly civilian run. Ah. And uh, so we had a real world mission where we got tasked to go up there, and we had to secure off this massive um, range that they had. Now, the reason why we had to secure it off is because this is the first time, it used to be, it was a hunting area. This is the first time in 50 years they've ever closed it down to hunters. It's because strikers were going up there and they were having a live fire. Uh, yeah, you can't risk having Yeah, so somebody. we were up there for, um, uh, it's like, I can't remember if it was two weeks or a month. I can't quite remember. I had to ask some of my Alaska buddies how long we were up there. But it was one of my first real world missions. We had a real world mission, but it was inside Alaska. So, so you had to kind of walk the whole area, kind of making sure there's nobody there. I assume. No, you you were stationed in certain spots in your Humvee, uh, and with night vision, and you were constantly searching and watching certain areas. And if you ran into anybody or anything, you had to tell, tell them, them what was going on. Out. Give them a heads up. Nobody ran into any hunters at all. No, not a single one. No, that was never a thing. Uh, but. It was really cool because we got to take, a, like we had to take, the whole company went. So it was a whole company long convoy with headquarters platoon and like all of our uh, water buffaloes and trailers. Like it was a full loadout, 100% company heading up that way. So we did a 100% uh, company convoy up to this thing and it was like a six or six or eight hour drive I can't remember how long it took it that, was long it sounds like when our company it was super uh, long but it was like like you didn't run like you were on two lane roads that you didn't see a car coming the other way for hours and they'll even tell you that like the closest police response or anything up here is like an hour 45 mm -hmm. that's their call time it was awesome and that's like the one place I told you that we did that big company what exercise that like town I remember, I've told you about it before. Yeah, it was a training exercise, wasn't it? Yeah, and like, they, it was our company, I'm pretty sure it was like two, other, two or three other companies, because we filled like four different barracks up there. Yeah. And that's kind of like that, we, you know, trucking all the Humvees up there, and it just, even took our, we had like, I think it was nine ASVs, and we took all them as well. Uh -huh. I think they loaded them on the trucks and brought them up there, but. The ASVs? Mm -hmm. They? We had a. Uh, the first time I ever ran into an ASV ever was when I got to Fort Polk. Like I, my I went from Intel Union, Alaska, and never seen the ASV. I've never seen ASV up there, and then I went to personal security. So we didn't have ASVs. We just had like we had uh, hard car Beamers and like hard car Audis and like uh, stuff like that. It, we didn't have like, and plus we were the only other. Army personnel, besides like the SF cell, that had automatic weapons, that was allowed to have automatic weapons in Belgium, because they don't allow troops to have automatic mm -hmm. weapons. It's one of their things, except for a certain few. But we also work with the gendarmes, which are like their FBI version of, of, of Belgium. Um, like we work in the same little shack yeah. with with them. I guess it wasn't a shack. I guess it's as big as this. But, yeah, we almost aren't allowed to have uh, automatic weapons besides the SF sale. Um, like, I remember when the first time we went up there, because we did it twice, I was uh, the turret gunner of an ASV up there, mm -hmm. but I wasn't inside. I, we didn't, because they weren't using the Mark 19 or 50 cal on it. Nope, they attached the 240 on top of the roof, uh -huh. and that's how I did it, so you have to, you know... You're fighting with the little thing down here to swivel the turret while having to maintain the weapon up here. So you're only half poking out like this. Oh, yeah, that's pretty stupid. And you, yeah, you got to fiddle with the controls to that's swivel so it. I don't understand. I don't understand. Like, I don't understand when they see stuff like that, and they're like, that's really retarded. We should just not do that. You should, I should tell everybody. Like, some high I, – dude, I was one of the first ones to be like – talk to the platoon sergeant about like, – Sar like, Sarn Lane for folk or something like that. Sarn Lane, like – this is retarded. Why are we doing that? He'd be like, yeah, you're right. Tell your gunners to stop doing this. You know what I mean? Or something like that. And he would just 
Because it doesn't make sense. No. Why would you do, like, why? What's the point of an enclosed turret if you're poking out of it? Yeah. Well, and you can't even get up there. Like, you'd have to, like, you I understand. You have to stand on the seat. Yeah. In order to stand up there. And then yeah. you have to fiddle with the controls in order to swivel around. Right. And I, now I know from the talk of the guys that I I got with at Fort Polk, the platoon that I came in had just came back to Iraq, from Iraq, um, a couple months before I had gotten there. So they came back, and they had done, like, real-world ASV missions, like, got ASVs fucked up and stuff like that. So they, they are, like, my buddy Jameson, like, he knows ASV. Mm -hmm. like, that's his baby. Like, he knows in and out. Yeah, in and I was, out. He knows I was in charge ASV. of but my, they, my platoon's ones. They always talked about... Uh, well, see, we had a, a every squad had it in his team. Like there was a team that was the ASV driver. That's how ours moved. Well, motor pool Mondays, like most people would be going. Like you send the people to do the ASVs, but no. Sometimes either they oh, you're just talking about they'd be on patrol. They'd either be like doing oh. MP work no. and whatnot. So. Jump, but it, that's the first time I ever ran into ASVs, and those guys knew. Those guys knew their ASVs in and out. Like James said, "Come here, come." Come. Good girl. Good girl. Stay with your papas. Not sure what she sees. I don't know either. Just don't want her to go after people. At all. Stay with me. Probably start, start to ask you. Mm, I don't know. Sit. Sit. Good girl. Stay, stay. Good job. Good job. That's what I wanted to bring up. Got a new rifle. I did. What did you get? Uh, Savage Arms 6.5 Creedmoor. Savage Arms 6. In 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 6.5 Creedmoor. Do you know the model of your uh, rifle? XP. It's it's just Savage Arms XP. Yeah. Is what it is. And it's 6.5 Creedmoor. And you've shot it already, right? Mm -hmm. You took it to the range. How many bullet? How many rounds have you put through it so far? Do you remember? Do you know? mm -hmm. At least, probably closer to 50. About 50? About 50 rounds? I know I've done at least two boxes and a little bit of another one. So now, did, it come with a, did it come with a scope? Yes. It came with a scope. And you, you just comes, used the scope. It, that... it comes pre-mounted with a 3x9 um, that's already been four-sided in and everything. Four-sided, yeah. So when you put it down, where would you... What was your first shot at? A hundred yards? Did you do fifty? What'd you do? I think I did a fifty just Good. to just to kind of confirm what yeah. it was. I don't it, trust those things either. I don't trust those things at all. And like, then they're it, like, oh yeah, it's four sided. For one, I usually have my own scopes. I usually get my own scopes, but scopes prices are getting astronomical. Yeah, uh, yeah. This one it slapped exactly where it was supposed to hit. Yeah. And after and push, that, I don't. I did probably another follow-up shot just to kind of confirm. Yeah. And then from there, just went from the long to the long range target. Long range. So which which is how long? I think at that range, I'm pretty sure it's 200 yards. 200 yards. So you just shot at 200. So it's sighted in at 200 yards. Mm, I'm not sure if it's sighted there. I know with the bullets that I the the ones I use, they say they have no kind of up or down drop at 200. Uh -huh. So I'm not sure if it's sighted in at that or if that's just where the rounds are hitting right where I'm supposed to be. Because, if you know, it shows the drop. Do you have mill dots on your scope? I think so. I'm pretty sure it's... You would know if you had mill dots on your scope. Yeah, it's got the lines. On in... It's got tick marks in it. Yeah. It's got the... So it doesn't have the dots. Like, it's not... Center your crosshair and then dot, 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 no, dot. No, it's got lines. It's got hash marks. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I see what you're saying. Those are called something else, not mill dots. Those are called, uh, I can't remember what it's called. I, I started learning a, a lot about that whole sniper stuff. My, uh, Timmons, he's, he's one. He can tell you what those things are pretty quick. What I learned about... The Savage bolt actions is uh, each one of their bolts is made for that specific rifle. Oh. Like each bolt has its own serial number to that rifle. Huh. Hmm. Well, what I was saying, what I was saying, is like where I learned about the uh, like the mill dots and whatever those other ones are called. I started watching. There's a guy on YouTube called. Uh, 
I want to say it's like Tyvasaurus Rex. He's this, uh, he's a sniper dude that, that's, he talks about high level, um, um, sniping. Mm -hmm. And talks about his, with, and he's got some of the nicest rifles and some of the nicest, uh, scopes, like Swarovski optics and like, oh, 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 man, yeah. Yeah, like, if, if he's, if I sold one of his scopes, I could probably buy three rifles, you know what I mean? It's ridiculous. It, it makes me makes me sad that I don't have that. It makes me super sad that I don't have that. I like he talks about. So he has a lot of he has a lot of that son of a bitch got me too. See, I've been since Haiti. I've been infused with the hatred of mosquitoes with with mutant mosquito blood. There's more mutant mosquito blood inside me than human blood now. So that mosquito would have probably flown off but died within 15 seconds. My blood in them. <laughs> I tell you how bad the mosquitoes were in Haiti? Have I ever told I think you that? I, I think you've told me that they got pretty horrific. Dude, the worst. The worst thing ever in, the, in my entire world. Like, the worst. I... We had our cots, right? And then we had the old school mosquito netting, okay. which you had to have... Like that nylon kind of mesh netting. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the mosquito netting kind of looks like beekeepers mesh and stuff like that. But it... You had to... Some of us didn't have the poles that came with the cots. That Those poles, like... Do you remember how the cot ends? They, you had when you put them together. There was that bar. Yeah. You put the one on. It was always super easy. The, the other, other side one, you had to, like, was pry. You force had to of get God. another one. You had to get another one from a spare cot and pry it over. Right. Well, remember how they had holes in the top? Yeah. They had other holes. Those are for those poles that's supposed to come with your cot. Those poles stick up like three feet. You drape your mosquito netting over all four of those, and then now you have a. That's how you. And then you tuck your mosquito netting underneath your your. Uh, Air pad, oh. your, your air, uh, your sleeping pad. That's how those are supposed to work, right? So well, a lot of people didn't have the sticks, so they had to just find things. Broom handle. Yeah, or, or like whatever. That. Yeah, one of them was a cut up blue broom handle for sure. But uh, anyways, I actually tied off. I put a rock on the inside and then tied a string around it here, so that it pulled my mosquito netting back and it was hooked to the tent that we were in, the GP Medium that we were in so that it kind of made like a coffin effect so that I had more room at my head, right? Well, I went to sleep like the first, the first night or whatever. The very, the very first night we landed, we were made, we landed late too. All we were planning on doing was everybody was just gonna sleep in the trucks, we were gonna get up and then we were gonna roll out to where we needed to go, right? No. The place we were at, the airfield, the sergeant major that was in charge of everything, had other ideas. <laughs> he said that his troops must be sleeping in tents. So we had to pull out all of our gear, all of our cots, and we had to set up. We only set up as a minimum amount of what we needed to, but we still had a shit ton to set up. I had to set up those GP mediums, which is a, it, which takes time in itself. Yeah, it takes time in itself. I mean, uh, two squads working on a, a it's, you know. Two GP mediums, you know. Plus, we had to. Um, then we had we had females with us too, so we had you to. You have a third for them. Then. So no, they just sucked it up. They just sucked it up. Uh, they, they were some pretty cool, cool fucking females that went with us. But uh, they made us set all that set up up on our cots and stuff like that. And I woke and I had I wore everything. I wore my entire uniform. I didn't even take off my boots. Uh, I pulled my. I had my gator neck up around my face as much as I could, and I was in a mosquito netting, and I just barely slept like this, right? Well, we finally got, in the morning we got up, and everybody, like, was showing their mosquito bites. Like, I had set up my mosquito netting correctly. Like, I had tucked it under my sleeping mat. Some people just let it lay on the ground. Oh, they just kind of and then, Yeah, and then also, before I went to bed, like, when I got in my mosquito netting, when I opened it real quick and got in, and tucked everything, I stayed awake and looked around inside my mosquito net. Just like to 15, murder 20 any of the few? To find any of them. Because they'll be, they'll, even if you smack the thing, they'll stay and hang on, and they'll just stay in an area you can't see them. 
in on you. You can't tell if they're on the inside or the outside sometimes. So you just, oh, it was so terrible. Anyways, I, I had a couple bites, not too bad. Woke up, had to repack everything, cool. go go to wherever. Then we got really set up, right? Well, that night after that whole mission, after that whole setting up tents and, and again and finding a spot to live and securing places to take a shower and like all these other whole bunch of whole shit we had to do the next day. Oh, so much. Because we were literally, like our barriers, our perimeter was literally just triple stand Constantina wire. Mm -hmm. That was it. That was our perimeter. That was the perimeter of the base that we were on. That's how early we are into the Earthquake HA mission of, uh, now don't get me wrong, it's a humanitarian aid mission, but you're going down to a place where people are dying and starving. Yeah, they... And they're, they're in massive they're gonna numbers. They're going to get desperate. Yeah, they're going to... They, they can't feed. They, and we, we're having to work with rice trucks. Like, that was our, supposed to be our mission, was escorting rice trucks. <sighs> we were going to get into it. And it's not like you can shoot these people. You know what I mean? You can't do that. You're on, a, you're on a humanitarian aid mission. All about hearts and yeah, minds. Yeah, if they, if they come at you with a machete, you can. You know what I mean? Maybe they don't really and want you still, to shoot. Them. They yeah. probably want you to shoot past. Them. Yeah. Well, we had riot control rounds and the shotguns oh, that okay. only NCOs could carry because they were NCOs, the only ones that could use a shotgun. Because I guess you had to have, I guess you had to be a sergeant to learn how to do this. Boom. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Let me take the safety off. Boom. Like that's not hard. It's not that hard. Like that. That's easier than. Learning all the shit you had to do with the M4, yeah. you know what I mean? But anyways, I digress. Um, where was I at? God damn it! I was off at such a tangent. Uh, hearts and minds, Constantina wire, rice trucks. No, okay, mosquitoes. That was the whole thing. Man, I went way off. We started with mosquitoes. Jesus. So, went to sleep that night, and I didn't wear my gloves this time. I was like, I'm just, I don't want to wear my fucking gloves. I just want to sleep normal, right? And I ended up, like I normally do, laying on my side with my arm at. Well, and my that, arm that was directly up against the mosquito net all like, night. Sweet. I woke up, my hand looked like a boxing glove. Like, it was so swollen, I could squeeze like this, and you couldn't see where my knuckles were at. You know what I mean? You couldn't see. It was, I counted 79 bites on my entire hand. 79, I counted them all. I'm sure you were probably a little bit enraged as well. Bro, this is my, that's my, that's my killing hand. That's where my trigger <laughs> finger's at. Fat yeah. finger ain't yeah. fitting yeah. in there. Yeah, you can't, can't even get in the wheel well in, or in the, in the, in the trigger well. Anyways, I was so mad. I couldn't, I couldn't put my glove on. I couldn't, I could barely... I could barely squeeze my hand into a fist. I was already thinking, well, I got malaria. There goes the rest my of my fucking over. life. There goes my fucking life. It sucks forever. Second day into this fucking goddamn country, and I got malaria. Fuck you. And I'm not taking those goddamn malaria pills. Of course not. You get fucking terrible nightmares on those things. Like insane nightmares. Like every single thing that you're the most scared of ever. Hey, let's, let's see that that night. Let's, <laughs> let's go ahead and put that in your head. But make it your dad <laughs> or something like that. You know what I mean? I mean, it's not so like anybody terrible. can do anything for it. They're going to slap some anti-itch anti -itch cream on it and call it good. So I'll show my buddies my hand, and they were like, Jesus Christ. Um, that sucked. I hated mosquitoes forever. From, from then on, I slept. I made sure to sleep like this and wear gloves. And wear, like, my entire uniform, a clean uniform. I go get a shower. I go get a shower and then have to put on my two-day-old uniform because the rest of them haven't been washed yet. So I had to, well, that's the cleanest. I didn't do too much in that. I didn't, I didn't have, at least I didn't have swamp ass in this one. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you put that on. We're coming out of your shower that you got to take every two days. And our shower, Haiti was where I found out that I can fully shower with six with six 12 ounce water bottles I can completely shower with six 12 ounce water bottles imagine you have to wet yourself quit then digging then lather up you just 
take your you take your 12 ounce water bottle, you take your knife, and you just poke a hole in the top of it, and you squeeze it. And you just get enough that you need to get. So you're like nuts, butts, pits, and face in that order, same washcloth. <laughs> well, yeah, you don't want to go up. <laughs> nuts, butt, pits, then face. Why would you in that order? Why would you do face last? No. <laughs> That's just how you say it. You get nuts, butts, pits, and face. And I used to just say, in that order, same cloth. Because it makes you hardcore. It's like saying, I want I want a warm milk and a dirty glass. That means you're pretty hard if you order that in a bar. It's true. Right? It's true. But, six 12-ounce water bottles. For, you got to shower every two days. And then we upgraded. We made a Connex. We had these small Connexes. A little... The, the, yeah, the smaller, the smallest connexes. We ran some uh, ratchet straps that we had that were for gear across in an X pattern in the inside of it. Mm -hmm. Put a five gallon water jug up in the top of it, and it would balance itself on those. Uh, I imagine it was so hot there; those five gallon things would just heat up. Well, if they left them in the sun, that was nice. Like if they left them in the sun, it was okay because a lot of times, like. Uh, you had to, uh, sometimes it was cold. Like at night, it would get cold, like sometimes. And if, in, in, when you had to shower at that time frame and the water's super cold, like you had to suck it up. Like you really had to you suck it up. You just said, fuck it, I'm dealing with it. Yeah, so you would you would unscrew the vent cap that was on there and a little bit of water would tri tri trickle out. And you'd, that's how you'd work. And you, once you were done, got enough water, you'd turn it off, you'd do your stuff, you'd rinse off. Rinsing always took the less. And especially, the worst was like, Females had to take a shower. I think we were on rotations of like every three days or every four days we had to get a shower. Females were always on two minimum, like uh, because they just need they need extra hygiene in the field. And the girls were super conscious about. Well, I don't want to do my hair because it takes so goddamn long to do my hair in there. Like I would have to. I'm sucking down. Like all the females, their shower days were all the same, mm -hmm. and it was. Away from like the guys, the shower course. times, of course, the shower times, so that they had, because they used a lot more water than we did, because they had to wash their hair and stuff like that. So, man, I didn't have a beard while well, I was trying to grow one. But that got nixed. But yeah, they, Haiti was, phew, Haiti was an awesome adventure. Don't get me wrong. Whole bunch of shitty situations, some whole bunch of terrible stuff. But not getting shot at. It's always a plus. Also getting to see a jungle. You know, who, who can say, man, I've seen some jungle? Not a lot of people. Not a lot of people. Like, anybody could be, can say, oh, I've seen the redwoods, or I've seen the, the pines of Oregon, you know. Swamps stuff of like that. <laughs> yeah. Nobody admits that they see all the swamps of Fort Polk. Nobody admits that. That's a thing they keep secret. Unless they tell other people that have seen the swamps of Fort Polk. I remember um, when they were going over like cops stuff, you know, because they constantly do retraining death by PowerPoint stuff when you have days where you have nothing to do. So they'd be doing like the, oh, well, let's go in here and do some training on this. And so they'd be going through to, you know, you get new privates in every now and again. Right. Everyone gets to learn about how to do cops again. Yeah. I remember. We didn't drink your water. You, yeah, having that, was it every four months or whatever? Whenever they could feel like they could schedule it. And I remember, like, because I've, I've typed your name in before just to kind of see where you pop up and, you know, mm -hmm. all some of your cases. and like. I was telling Jamie about that the other day. I was like, well, yeah, Luke had told me that he, because he was an MP2, he would look at my cases and see what well, I was doing. Well, I just, doing like, casually, that. like, it's just, like, a lot of bullshit you dealt with. It's just, yeah. like. Yeah, but I had a couple, I had a couple, uh. I had a couple cool cop things in there. I had a, uh, a lot of domestic assaults and, and, and physical Weren't domestic assaults. those always just so much fun? Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, I was good at them. And then I got massive drug busts when I got that huge drug bust in Alaska. Um, I think whenever I – the one time – like one or two times I looked at it, I just kind of casually looked at it, and I think the majority of it was all like Fort Polk stuff. I didn't go – 
I didn't like search every bit of his. Oh, you should have looked at him, man. I got some pretty cool cases in there. Pretty cool. Uh, almost got a, almost got put in for a AAM uh, Army Achievement Medal for that drug bust in Alaska, but I ended up getting an Article 15, so that went out the window <laughs> before the Article 15 paperwork went in before the before you could before get the, the other reward. One. Paperwork got finished and put in, so Although, that put that on the back. Wouldn't that have been kind of funny though to be get to get the AA? That'd have been awesome. You know, that... you know, it would be awesome if if we could just do it all. If I could just have a company wide AAM session award ceremony, right? And then immediately when they pin it, they say congratulations. Everybody in the entire company has to file through and shake my hand. Everybody, they better, right? And then back into formation, and then start Article 15 proceedings, and I lose my rank right there. <laughs> Wouldn't that have been some shit? That would have been hilarious. It would have been, it would have taken, it would have been way shorter. And then they, shorter. they would have called you up there, and they would have sent you know, back, and then they would have called you right back up there. Yeah, and yeah. It. Now we're getting into Article 15 proceedings. Uh, PFC, what did I get when I, I was a PFC when I got my Article 15, went, got knocked down to a PV2. And, uh. Yeah, that would have been hilarious. I, I could, you know, I, you know, you think of those things, that's kind of, fun, kind of funny when it would, have, it would have actually happened like that. But. I would have loved it. I would have loved it. And because the funny thing is, they would have had to give you that AAM if that paperwork yeah. would have just gotten in before the other one. It, it was would have the, gotten approved. It was the reason why I was a PB2 driver in Afghanistan. That way, instead of being a specialist driver in Afghanistan like I was supposed to, like it was supposed to be Sar Moroy, specialist well, cook. Most of most of our drivers were privates. It's the TC that was generally a specialist for us. Some, yeah, that's the newer age where they started doing a lot of. Well, I was also hand picked to go on these Advon missions, and that's when I got into Sar Moroy's team. Sar Moroy was just a fresh uh, uh, E5. He made his E5 in two years, like like. Uh, there was only one person that made it earlier than him, and that was Draper, because Draper got it a month. Sergeant Draper got it a month before him. Anyways, comes out of comes out of uh, um, PLDC, as it was called at the time, which is now WLC, Warriors Leaders Course, um, which it might have changed by now. Whoever knows? It was Personal Leadership Development Course, uh, PLDC. I know when I was still in, it was still WLC. Yeah, definitely WLC. You were, well, you were in later than me, so definitely. Uh, he came out as like, I don't know if it's like valedictorian or whatever they call it is. It was just, you know, a, a honor grad. He, he got all the accolades, got all the accolades, wrote his own speech and stuff like that. So the first time of me meeting my team leader, Sar Moroy, was we went to his graduation out of PLDC. And uh, he he picked, he, he hung out. We had, he was in the platoon. I got to meet him and stuff like that. And he wasn't, a, he didn't have a team at the moment, but he got handpicked to be the one to, Hand pick his team to go on this Advon thing. So he picked me, and uh, at first it was uh, Anderson, it was Specialist Anderson at the time. And I had got busted down. I was supposed to be, a, it was going to be me, Specialist Anderson, and Specialist Cook, me being the gunner at first. Come here. Leave it, leave it. Um, that's how it's supposed to go. And then they didn't want they didn't want to take Anderson. The company decided not to take Anderson. They overrid Sarmoroy's uh overrode his his choice because he was too small and the Afghan police wouldn't respect him. So they sent Gordo. And Gordo was this tall, lanky, six three, uh, dopey son of a bitch that we loved to death. And it, started, it was specialist Gordon. It was private Gordon at the time. But uh, or was it? No, I think it was specialist Gordon because he had college. He already had college in his can't remember. Huh. Anyways. Um, where did I get off where did I get off on that tangent? That's uh, crazy. You were the driver. Yes, yeah, so I was a I was a private I was a private driver uh, for that. Because you guys had because you said you had specialist team leaders in the in the in the, uh, the T C C Yeah. Like ours was specialists were drivers at the time. So because we had enough E5s and or corporals, and there was only a certain, there's only a couple specialist team leaders. Like, but the reason why they were specialist team leaders is because they were promotable at the time. That's the only reason why. So they were waiting on there to get their yeah, waiting for either like points slot, to come. yeah, or points to be wherever. Of course, points were retarded when I was in 795. 
for four years. Out of a possible 800. Yeah. Retarded. Absolutely retarded. Anyways. I went, I got, I made specialist while I was in Afghanistan. I would have made it before I went. And it would have made more sense that I did specialist. But I still went in there as a, I got bumped up from a gunner to a driver. And I was like, awesome. <laughs> Also, the Cordo was a Cordo started as our gunner. I wish I could contact Cord. I haven't talked to him forever. Last thing I knew, he put in when he got back. The commander forced him to put in his OCS packet, so he's an officer. And the last thing I heard was he was a he lieutenant. He got warrant or no? He, he was a lieutenant in the 101st, and he was in Iraq. So that's the last thing I heard. That's the, uh, it's a curse of not having social media. That's okay, though. Yeah. I'm not worried about it. Oh, being a gunner wasn't always that horrible. It <laughs> wasn't Afghanistan, dude. Well, Fuck all that, man. I had to, I had, I smarted off to Sergeant Mulroy and he got mad at me and stuck me in the gun seat. And then while I was sitting in the gun, I, I was in there way longer than I should have been. At least that's what I thought. Uh, <laughs> not according to Sergeant Mulroy. And then we decided to just, uh, we were just going to make sure Gordon gets his driver's badge as well. Because you have to have so many miles or so many hours to get yeah. your driver's badge. So we were just like, well, fuck it. We're short time, and you know what I mean? We're out. We're not really doing anything super, super crazy, but we'll uh, we'll make Gordo drive. And he drove for a long time, and then I'll just pull security. Um, but, yeah, it sucked. I remember, especially, we linked up with the company one time, and they stuck us in the back, like, like, they acted like they knew this area more than we did, and we were out here all the time, all the time. So you knew all the MSRs? Yeah, everything. We knew where we were going. We knew that the way that they were going was stupid, and it was going to take way longer. You know, shit like that. Uh, but they didn't want to hear anything from us. They stuck us in the back, so I was in a gunner, and I had to be a tail gunner, so I had to be backwards. And we were on Isn't Afghanistan roads, on fucking back Afghanistan roads puked so much. I puked I, I puked so much I was non-mission capable. Like, I I puked all over the back of the Humvee. I had to wash that bitch off. It was so terrible. I remember that, you, I remember that as a kid. Uh, if you didn't sit up in the front seat so you could see, if you saw the back seat, you got oh, car Oh, dude, I always like got car sick. Yeah, I always got car sick. I always thought that was, I was, a I was kid. like, this is bullshit. Yeah. I got the front seat. This motherfucker is up here in the front. Yeah. But I would. I'd puke. I'd, I'd puke. I used to puke all the time when I was a kid. Like, and it never, it's never gone away. It's never gone away. I think it's only because I've been, I've been so used to, um, even today, if I sit in the back of something and like, if I get and I start like reading my phone or something or reading a start book nauseous. or I'll be like, Oh, there's that. I'm getting sick and headachy and hot real quick. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, can't do this. I got to pay attention to something. So what I do, what I do to stay awake and pay attention to stuff is when I'm looking out the window, mm -hmm. I pay attention to if anything and everything was possible and you had to follow the vehicle with a dirt bike, but you couldn't touch pavement, how would you do it? So I look at the terrain that's going, and I'm like, if I'm on a dirt bike, I'm like, okay, I would, I would balls up that hill right there, and then I'd ramp off that. Right, and even when I come ramping off that, I'd be able to hit this side. I'd come running down. Then I could just run the shoulder forever. Maybe I'll jump up on this guardrail and I'll balance my dirt bike on this guardrail, and I'll just and I'll just stay with the vehicle till we get on the other side of the bridge. What happens when, what happens then, when you hit those then bridges? I'll, and then I'll hop. That's what you do. Oh. You gotta you gotta find a way to get the dirt bike over there. But anything and everything's possible. Within a certain, like, I'm not like, oh, I'm going to jump this river that would take <laughs> something that. Yeah, I'm going to jump the Miss Mississippi yeah, River. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, something that is actually feasible, but you have to be a super expert to be able to pull it off. You know what I mean? Like, a, you know those guys that have the dirt bikes that jump up on rocks and stuff like that? You know what I mean? So you had those skills, but with just like a regular dirt bike. That's how I think about it. So, it, so I'll start, I'll pay attention to that, and I'll pay attention to the train, but, oh, okay, I'll, uh. I'll ramp out of this culvert, which will be able to jump this road, and I'll be right back into the other side culvert, and I'll keep on. Wah, wah, wah. That's what I do. That's what I do. I pay attention to the outside, and I just do that in my head. 
super fun. Maybe next time you're passionate, you should try it. It'd be awesome. Except if you're in Iowa, then I guess that's just kind of like, well, that's boring. I'm just going balls to the wall. ramp over this cornfield. Yeah, I, I, I'm going balls to the wall. I'm, on a, I'm in a cornfield forever. So, oh, now I'm in a soybean. That's a dirt road, so I can drive over it. I'm going to ramp this tractor. Yeah. yeah you got to do it when you're in a place like <laughs> that, that's That's pretty fun to pay attention to. Yeah, man. That's pretty good. It's actually starting to cool off now. It is. It's starting to feel a little bit better out We're here. finally getting a breeze, but the problem is we get a breeze, and uh, that's when the mosquitoes start rolling in. They're like, oh, I'm going to hide behind you because you block the wind and also your food. Mmm, yummy. Makes me wish I would have bought one of the uh, boring company's flamethrowers. Oh, yeah. Elon Musk's uh, company. Really wish it. You mean not a flamethrower. Yeah. <laughs> not a flamethrower. Well, I think it's probably getting pretty dark. So I think we're going to call it that puppy inside. It's good fun. Yeah, see those over here. That was a great podcast, though, for real. That's awesome. Maybe we'll do a couple more. And, and, what do we got coming up this week? Uh, the cabin on Friday. Yep, and then we're we heading up to a hunting cabin up in, uh, uh, PA. Um, have never been up there before, but kind of want to do... I kind of want to do a podcast while we're up there and film some fun stuff, do whatever we want to. I'm taking my bow. I know there'll be more people up there, too, that can get more opinions. And yeah, 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 definitely. There'll be a, it's supposed to be one, two, three, four, five, I don't know, six, eight people. I don't know, something like that. It'll be cool. I mean, even if they want to join it or not. But I think I'm looking forward to it. We've never been up there. I'm going to take my bow and my bow block so I can have something to do. I'm still going to do some cardio while we're up there, maybe check out the place. Uh, I need to talk. Rifle. You'll get to try out my rifle. Yeah, we might shoot some guns. We might shoot some guns. That'll be a thing. But anyways, that's it, fuckers. Later. Not going to work. Nope. Nope. Peter says no. Let's see if it works like the key change work. Nope, that's Bluetooth. <laughs> it's an entirely different thing. But you remember what I was talking about? You remember the key remotes, the key fobs? Wouldn't work like this. You have to open your mouth, though. No, I didn't. <laughs> you, just, you just use your entire head.